Well, hello. I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. This week's Pens in Use is more of a pens on the road, because I was traveling to Minot, and I was going to actually film this in Minot, but the class ended a day earlier than I thought. I had uh, switched in my brain, not on my paper calendar, thank God, uh, which class was supposed to be the full week and which one was the four-day class. So... Uh, I do have a class coming up later this summer in Fargo, and I will film that one on the road. So, this is a hybrid. So let's take a look at the pens. If videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you ever been to Minot? <laughs> Sorry. Oh, why'd I even bother with that as a conversation starter? But if you have, that'd be pretty cool. So let's take a look at the pens. First, I have a Senator President from the Ukraine. I have a Central Pen 10014, which was in uh, this week's review. I have a Senator 10014, which was in this week's review. I have an Omas Ojiva. I have a Pilot Custom, uh, Pilot Custom 823, which is empty because uh, this was my daily writer all week and I wrote with it to the point that I ended up cleaning it out uh, before the week was over. Uh, Platinum 3776. With the gorgeous koi finish. A Visconti Homo Sapiens, which I would have sworn by now would be empty. A uh, Tolls Pencala Myrna, which another one I would have sworn by now would be empty. An Isco Central Pen something or other. And a Rex Pen. Made by Tolls. Which stands for Pencil Factory of Zagreb, by the way. So those are the pens that I'm using this week. Now we're going to use a BOMO art journal. We'll take a closer look at how they write. Uh, I've slightly rearranged my set to see if I can get a little bit more natural writing. Um, you can't tell the difference from there, but I can. But... Uh, I think I rearranged my writing desk in the wrong direction. So we'll find out. This so my first pen is a Senator President, which I think is meant to look rather Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc um, Senator has gotten into customized pens. So I think this is a hybrid between their great fountain pen era and the present. This is a Ministry of Coal Mining from the Ukraine. Pist piston filler. Can't really see the ink window, but I'm, I'm writing it down pretty quickly. Uh, but it holds an amazing amount of ink. I actually woke up in a cold sweat this morning because I had a nightmare about this pen. Uh, I had this nightmare that I dropped it, and it just shattered. Uh, I was able to get all the pieces together, and then uh, in this nightmare I dropped it again. And uh, you know, the thing that worried me the most was actually how am I going to hide from my channel what I've done to this pen. Luckily, as you can see, it was just a nightmare. Uh, I'm almost tempted to insert a special effect sound there of a bunch of pens hitting the floor, but I don't feel like it. <laughs> this program doesn't come with any special effects anyway. Oops. Senator, not Platinum. Platinum also has a very nice president. So this is a Senator President with a broad nib. Uh, the ink in it is Pelican. Okay, it seems like I... Not as uphill as I thought. If I move my chair, I'm actually pretty comfortable. Um, so maybe I accidentally got this right. By the way, I was noticing this little patch on the trim ring. I believe that was used for monogramming the pen, so I could put my initials there, for example, if I wanted to. 
but very wet pen and I'm told that's a very dry ink um, so I'll be curious to try some other inks in it this beauty is a central pen 10014 it has a, a three-digit code after that which somebody in the comments suggested that might be have to do with how many in that finish they did but uh, I don't know so I'd be curious if you know Uh, the ink in it is diamine and just turning off my screensaver so I can read the name diamine Colt pens so it's made just for the company Colt pens deep dark green sort of a nice just just a nice dark green this next central pen has an absolutely gorgeous finish. One of the people in the comments mentioned he has a several of these central pens in several of the finishes, including some I don't have. And what he likes, he finds himself doing is exactly what I'm doing now, just turning it over and over and staring at the material. It is a gorgeous celluloid. Um, it may not be that famous Omas celluloid, but I'd put it up there. It is just fantastic. So this is also a central pen. Actually, as I write this, you know what maybe bothers me more? Uh, when I write, I'll move the notebook around more. Uh, when I'm doing this on the screen, and I, for you, of course, I can't. And I wonder if that's maybe where some of my discomfort with writing on screen comes from. At least I'm not doing like I used to. I used to have to straddle the tripod and... Uh, <laughs> that and basically watch my writing through the screen or worse i'd hold the ipad in one pan, hand and uh write with the other and that turned out about as well as you'd expect if you go back to my early videos that is exactly what i was doing so this is pelican edelstein olivine um do i dare say these look really similar Omas Ojiva. This is an Omas Ojiva. Uh, I just, I don't know, the pen, I like the pen. The thing that really makes it special for me is the nib. I love writing with it. And this pen has a medium, extra flexibile nib. I'm told that there is a company that's taken up, wow, in my show notes I wrote soft medium, so I'll have to go in and change that before I post the video. Kyono Oto. Keshi Murasaki. Which apparently is Japanese for purple dye that's been overheated. I don't know lots about the dye making process, but I do know some of them are heated and cooked. So uh, apparently that's what happens when you overcook your purple dye. Now I should be doing my Pilot Custom 823 next. It was my daily writer all week. But I emptied it and since I was on the road I decided to clean it. And uh, yeah, so you don't get a writing sample from that one this week. Maybe I'll have to... Oh, what's over here on my desk? Oh, my uh, Nakaya. Oh, there it is. So, just for giggles and snorts, we'll throw in my Nakaya, which is not on the show notes, but I'll try and remember to throw it in there. Uh, I love this thing. It definitely did not go to Minot with me, and when my class in Fargo happens later this summer, it won't be going there either. So, this is a Nakaya. Decapod. Twist. And it has a soft, fine nib. And did you notice it started right up? I kind of wondered what would happen there. Uh, the ink in it is Sailor Gentle Epinard. 
which is French for spinach, and uh, that looks like the color of cooked, cooked spinach to me. So, apt name. I have spinach in my garden. It has not sprouted in the week I've been gone, but I have hopes that by the next time I get home there will be something there. And I just noticed... Oh. Hmm. Sorry, I, I got distracted. I noticed this laying over there. I don't, and it took me a minute to remember where it came from. Uh, if you're the person who sent it to me, thank you. Um, I do know who sent it to me and what the story is behind it, but I haven't filmed that video yet. So we'll get to that one. And then, Platinum 3776 in the Koi finish. This one got some comments up in my not. Maybe getting some chemistry teachers into fountain pens, we'll see. Of course, they were chemistry teachers from all over North Dakota. Uh, this ink is Kyonooto Urahiro, which I may have butchered that. That's supposed to be the green on the underside of a leaf. What I've found with this one, this in this this ink in this pen, is that the first line or two with this pen is very dark like this, and then it gets lighter as you go to, uh, after a line or two. So you get to see the dark there. Did I? No, last week I did the same exact thing. Did I use it the week before? Yeah. Hey, that's been inked up for three weeks. That is actually quite something. All right. Visconti Homo Sapiens. It's one I, uh, it's actually a used pen I bought several years ago. Um, I like the nib. I like the appearance. I like the material. I think it's unique. I haven't been in a hurry to buy any more Viscontis. I just, uh, well, they're kind of expensive and, uh, I'm just more into this vintage thing. Not that, you know, it's a bad pen. I like the pen. I just don't see myself adding another one anytime soon. Uh, the nib on it is medium. I thought by now this pen would be empty. This pen was inked up. It stayed inked up. Um, I let it sit for a couple of weeks unused, and then I used it again. Um, I don't know. I, I did something different with the fill. Let me show you not on that pen, because I don't know how much ink is left in that. But basically, when you, it's a vacuum filler just like this. And what you do to fill them is you unscrew this end, pull out the plunger, stick it in the ink, push this plunger down, and it will fill with ink up to like around here. If you want a full fill, you turn it upside down, preferably over a sink. Do this, push in the plunger, until you start to see ink well up around the feed and the nib. Then you turn it upside down, stick it in the ink bottle again, push the plunger the whole way in, and you get yourself a full fill of ink. Which is exactly what I'll be doing with this pen. And no, I'm not going to demonstrate on my nice desk, because I'd like to keep it nice. Uh, this is my Mirna. This is a Toes Pencala Mirna. It also has an EMI written on the barrel. The same company, the name switched around a lot. Pencala started to come back after the Cold War. Um, originally it was Moster Pencala. Then the war happened and it became Toes, uh, which stands for Pen Pencil Factory of Zagreb. And now they're back to the Pencala name. Apparently this is a fine, and the ink in it is Sweet Potato Purple. As I remarked last week, my first impression of this pen was not good, but you put a different ink in it, like this one, and suddenly, I like it. 
this one is almost is getting towards empty I don't know if you can make it out now yeah, you really can't not on the camera but semi translucent barrel with a very nice finish almost reminds me of the Pelican finishes this pen is a I believe made by central pen My flipping God. Okay, so uh, I don't know if I'm in focus or not, but here's what happened. I record my video on this. And it suddenly said can't re blink bleeped and it said can't record. So I played with the menu a little bit. The, it said there's no card present. Well, there is. Uh, right now, I, I was looking through what's recorded on it. There's one video, uh, but it, instead of a little video preview like you should see, it has a question mark. Uh, so I clicked on that to get it to play. And right now, and, and then it said, I asked, do I want to recover the data? So I clicked yes, and right now, it is, let's see if, you probably can't see this, but right now the screen says recovering data. So if I, I, I mean, my God, I'm on the second to last pen. If I seriously have just lost everything, I'm going to be angry. But we'll just press stop on everything for now and we'll resume in a bit. So I don't know uh, what happened there. I, I feel like it's time for some new... <laughs> new cards for the two cameras but uh anyway for some reason it suddenly couldn't recognize that card but luckily the footage was restored uh, that, that's a good lesson in having backup now honestly this a-roll footage would have been pretty useless for this type of video you would have just seen me hunched over the desk here writing and talking because the the sound is just fine but yeah that's why i keep that camera running and this one running because often i can make something out of it like when this camera failed a week or so ago i just used my b-roll for the whole whole thing and it worked so back to the show so the next pen i was about to bring up is a unbranded now the main clues on it this reminds me a bit of my central pen 100820 And so does the ink window. And the nib is the same as on that pen. Not quite as high quality, but same branding and same labeling and stuff. So I believe this is a central pen. I don't know. A central pen did sell pens in other countries, not necessarily under this name. Uh, sometimes under the name Barclay. The ink in this is uh, Rohrer and Klingner. Oops, let's pull this up here. I've been trying to use more of my yellow inks, so uh, this is one I really like because it shows up very well. And it's just so pretty. Uh, like I said, this isn't that Central Pen 10082 all, but it is a good nib. And finally, my Rex Pen. And I don't have a model or anything else for it. Uh, that You will find pens a lot like this. Sold as Mertz, Mers and Krell or um, Senator. This one I purchased as a Rex Pen. And I think there was a lot of cooperation between all these companies. My ink, let me get my Evernote up again. Because in the midst of all that fluttering around, I lost it. Okay, this is an Ackermann ink. Uh, 
Ackerman bottles are really cool. Um, this is the only ink of theirs I've ever tried. Uh, I, I personally think I have too many bottles of ink, so I haven't really been in a hurry to try any other others. And yeah, I, I could buy some samples or something, but you know, I just have so many inks. I'm, I'm actually going to empty a few bottles out this summer. And uh, I feel like that's victory enough without replacing them. <laughs> So those are the pens and inks I was using this week while I was in Minot. Um, we'll talk about notebooks when I do the Fargo video. But uh, short version, I uh, one of the things I'm finding they do at some of these adult ed classes is they hand out everything. I didn't use the notebook quite as much as I'd hoped, but it is what it is. Uh, it was interesting. It was in the uh, Minot Central Campus, which if you know Minot, that's the downtown high school. Not a lot of parking around it. So a bus would come to our motel every day and pick us up and then drop us off at the end of the day. I liked that a lot, especially with how much Minot traffic has increased since I lived up there, that area, 13 years ago, before before the oil boom. Um uh, Minot Central Campus is an old 1920s building. It's, uh, you know, I, I was taking class up on the third floor. Apparently right by where the train goes by, because we heard that a lot. It drowned every, everything out in the room. So that must be interesting for teachers there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was impressed. It was, actually the building was very well fixed up inside. You know, it had been done not super recently, but fairly recently. It looked... Like it dated from probably the 2000s or probably the 2000s. It didn't look new enough to be more recent than that. Uh, Minot has actually had to go on a big building spree lately because of, well, increased enrollment. Uh, thanks to the oil boom. And the, the downtown has improved a lot too. So I'm just going to close with some footage I took in the downtown. Originally, like I said, this is going to be a pure pens on the road. It's going to be filmed in my motel room, but... With me coming home on Friday, it worked out, but then I ended up filming this late on a Saturday, so whatever. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, we'll take a quick tour of downtown Minot, and then uh, we'll close. So, of course, this is Central High School. This is a 1920s building. I was up on the third floor. You can't see the room I was at. It was on the other side, but... That wasn't the very scenic side, but I like that they've kept this old school, even though times have changed. Downtown Minot, of course, is a nice downtown. The streets are a little narrower than you'll find in some towns, but a wide variety of shops, some traditional, some not. Uh, just pleasant to walk around. They've been planting trees, and, you know, you have the mix of old buildings and new buildings. It's just very eclectic, and... Uh, this was a big boon, uh, a local independent bookstore. So visit Main Street Books if you're in Minot. Uh, again, just a couple of more stores. I just, like I said, I, I like a downtown. Uh, Clue Office Supplies repaired an old adding machine for me in Central Avenue Variety as a variety of everything. Uh, that's the offending train that we heard from our classroom several times a day. And uh, Railroad Bridge, for pedestrians, it crosses over all the tracks. There used to be more, but they seem to have disappeared since the flood, and I'm wondering why. Apparently the bridge was closed, but somebody had some uh, graffiti on the sign and uh, had moved the sign to the side. So I don't know if it was open or not. Somebody walked across it, but the other side, it's all just residential, so I didn't bother going over there. But I can see where if I did live over there, I would use this bridge a lot. And there is the old train station. Amtrak actually has a more modern station further, a little ways down the road, uh, track. And you just see some cool stores like the 62 just stuck out at me. I'd love to know what that is. It's only open Saturdays though. And finally, Josh Duhamel, who is an actor in, I don't remember what movie, owns Number 10 on North Main, which is a restaurant. So, that was Minot. I hope you enjoyed. And if videos like this interest you where I talk about fountain pens both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, have you ever been to Minot? <laughs> okay, that's a joke. Uh, probably not. But, I love a thriving downtown area. And 
Maybe you can recommend a small to medium sized city like Minot, although some people would call it a small town, uh, with a nice thriving walkable downtown like Minot. Let us know in the comments down below. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.